At a manufacturing plant in Germany, workers are pouring 16 tons of molten steel into two massive casting ladles to create parts for the MTU-8000, the world's most powerful and fastest diesel engine. This 20-cylinder common rail diesel engine measures 7 meters in length, 2 meters in width, and 3.5 meters in height, with a weight of about 48 tons, comparable in size to a steam locomotive. Boasting a displacement of 350 liters and 13,600 horsepower, the MTU-8000 can consume 2,000 liters of fuel per hour. The most advanced Mediterranean catamaran, weighing 1,500 tons, is equipped with four of these MTU-8000 mega engines, enabling it to achieve an impressive top speed of 42 knots, or 75 kilometers per hour. The engine's largest and most critical component is the enormous crankcase, which is integral to its exceptional performance. Today, we'll explore the intricate manufacturing process behind this magnificent mega engine. The entire manufacturing process of the MTU-8000 diesel engine takes place in a German foundry, which has a tradition of ironworking and casting that dates back over 600 years to its origins as a small blacksmith shop in the 15th century. Today, the foundry's three blast furnaces operate at high speed, producing the raw materials needed to cast the colossal crankcase of the MTU-8000 mega engine. The raw materials used in this process include scrap steel, pig iron, artificial graphite, and silicon carbide. To cast a crankcase of this size, 16 tons of raw materials are required. Workers must continuously monitor the furnace's temperature, which must reach 1,500 degrees before the molten steel can be poured into the molds for casting. Throughout this process, workers use a measuring tube with a temperature sensing probe to monitor the furnace's temperature. As the temperature reaches different levels, workers add raw materials accordingly to ensure the proper hardness and toughness of the crankcase. Periodically, they also sample the molten steel by scooping it into a small crucible containing a tiny measuring tube that records temperature changes and sends the results to a computer in an adjacent office. If the molten steel cools according to the predetermined process, it verifies that the raw material ratios are correct. The intense heat in the steelmaking furnace is generated by an electric current, similar to a household induction cooker. However, in this case, three power frequency induction melting furnaces are used, boasting the energy of 5,000 microwave ovens and a power capacity of up to 4 megawatts. When the temperature reaches 1,500 degrees, workers pour out the molten steel and add magnesium as a seasoning to the ladle. At this temperature, magnesium instantly vaporizes, like carbon dioxide and soda water, passing through the hot molten steel. Its purpose is to change the network structure of iron molecules, making the crankcase more resilient. With everything prepared, 16 tons of molten steel are poured into two enormous casting ladles. This is because the crankcase's casting mold has only two pouring openings. The single component casting mold is made of resin-soaked quartz sand, which, after hardening, becomes even more durable than stone. Ten individual cores make up the entire casting mold for the Mega Engine's crankcase. Prior to casting, each mold is coated with an intermediate layer that emits a strong odor. This layer serves to prevent sand from adhering to the steel during the casting process. As the molten steel flows into the mold through a channel, it passes through a ceramic filter and then enters the mold via a series of carefully placed gating systems. This is the casting framework for the MTU-8000 Mega Engine. Once the 10 individual cores have been placed inside the framework, workers expertly fill it with sand. This sand is crucial, as, without it, the mold's components could be violently ejected during the casting process. The filling procedure demands skilled workers, as any inaccuracies may result in the mold being deemed unusable. Following this, the molten steel is poured. Throughout this process, workers diligently monitor the steel's temperature, ensuring it never drops below 1,400 degrees Celsius. A massive crane carefully transports the ladle of steel to the mold, a task requiring extreme caution. Once the workers pull the lever to open the valve, 16 tons of liquid steel flow into the entire mold in just 70 seconds, filling every cavity. After a minute, the casting is complete. The steel within the mold needs to cool for a full two weeks. 
Following this cooling period, workers will remove the crankcase from the mold. Workers are using a crane to lift it up, and the quartz sand shell begins to peel off. The crankcase of the brand new MTU 8000 Mega engine appears in front of us. Welders then cut off the two iron rods formed during the pouring process. There are numerous excess sections on the 7 meter long cast piece, and workers meticulously remove them one by one. These discarded materials are recycled and repurposed for the next casting process. Following this, the crankcase is lifted onto a large vibrating platform by the crane. As the vibrations intensify, the adhering quartz sand detaches from the casting. This quartz sand is also gathered for recycling and reuse. After three minutes, the mega crankcase is transported to a shot blasting room. Within this room, it is subjected to the impact of tens of thousands of steel balls, which clean the casting surface at speeds of up to 124 miles per hour. After an hour-long process, the outcome is a truly awe-inspiring engineering feat. The next step is to install this mega engine. The first step is to send the casting to the milling workshop, where a lathe will meticulously polish the crankcase over an entire day. The polishing machine's precision must be accurate to 1 400 of a millimeter, comparable to a bus-sized machine with an error margin no greater than 1% of a human hair's width. Following this, technicians in the measurement room carefully inspect each opening in the casting. Once everything checks out, the assembly process begins. This massive engine will be assembled by 35 skilled technicians over five weeks. First, the casting is hoisted onto a rotating platform where the crankcase is assigned a serial number, which is then etched on the surface by a machine. Workers double-check for residual impurities, as even the slightest debris or contamination could lead to disastrous consequences. Next, the camshafts are assembled, culminating in a 6-meter long, 400-kilogram structure. Technicians first cool the pins down to minus 198 degrees Celsius using liquid nitrogen, allowing the shrunken pins to fit perfectly into the camshaft flanges. Upon heating, they expand and secure themselves tightly. The technicians then apply lubricant to the camshaft before inserting the massive 6 meter long component into the installation channel. They meticulously install it section by section, ensuring perfect alignment to prevent the motor from jamming. Once the three segments are fastened with screws, they carefully push the camshaft into the engine. Made of reinforced steel, the camshaft is designed to last the engine's entire lifetime. With the first step of the installation complete, the mega engine moves on to the next station. The engine is subsequently positioned on another rotating platform. The crankcase, the largest component of the mega engine, has been dealt with, so now the second largest part, the crankshaft, is hoisted. This vital component acts as the engine's rotational and pivot center point. Measuring 6 meters in length and weighing a whopping 6,000 kilograms, the crankshaft is capable of rotating 20 times per second at full speed. To install it, the engine must be inverted. A crane hoists the crankshaft towards the casing, and within 20 minutes, the installation is complete. Technicians then slightly rotate the sizable base, commencing the installation of the pistons. Before the piston is assembled, the connecting rod needs to be measured and recorded. A piston, with a diameter of 720 millimeters, is prepared, and the 100 kilogram connecting rod is hoisted and gently placed into the piston. The bolt is then inserted and secured. It takes 15 minutes to assemble a single piston, and there are 20 pistons in total to install. Installing the piston crown is a more intricate task, for bolts are positioned, followed by the cylinder liner, which is then fastened with 24 bolts. This automated process is closely monitored, ensuring that technicians do not forget to tighten any bolts. The piston connecting rod is placed into the cylinder liner, and an exhaust component is installed as the final step. Upon completion of the installation, the crane gently lowers each individual cylinder into the super engine. Inside, the connecting rod flawlessly attaches to the crankshaft. 
Next, the connecting rod is temporarily secured using white plastic components, and the engine is rotated once again to facilitate the installation of the 20 bottom connecting rod caps, each weighing 25 kilograms. The piston's up and down motion caused the crankshaft to rotate 20 times per second. To endure the immense stress over decades, the connecting rod has been specially strengthened. Technicians then connect the hydraulic oil pipe, and the hydraulic steel raises the bolts with a pressure of 1,600 pascals, finalizing the installation. Subsequently, the fuel lines, exhaust lines, and cooling systems will be assembled. Next up, the engine proceeds to the third station, installing the gear transmission box. First, a special sealant is applied, followed by installing a 200 kilogram cover. This super engine can operate for over 35 years without requiring maintenance. The subsequent step involves the installation of the turbocharger module, which consists of thousands of components and can significantly enhance the performance of the diesel engine. The factory takes a week to install this two-ton turbocharger module. Once completed, it must be secured to the mega engine. Two technicians connect it to the exhaust gas recirculation system. At this point, the engine weighs 40 tons. A hydraulic device is then used to gradually press the clutch onto the crankshaft, and the second part of the clutch is secured with bolts. The 40-ton machine is then hoisted above the oil sump, resting on six pillars. The oil sump has a capacity of 1,600 liters. After installation is complete, the final station involves installing electronic components. Hundreds of meters of copper pipes, cables, and hoses are installed both inside and outside the engine. Each pipeline is manufactured in-house and then connected. These pipeline components are primarily composed of copper, nickel, and iron alloys, ensuring that they will not corrode even when submerged in seawater. Over the past five weeks, nearly 20,000 components have been installed in this engine. At this point, the engine manufacturing process is complete. After undergoing 46 tests and five hours of cleaning, the workers wrap critical pipes and apply paint before the engine is officially delivered for use. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining us today in the world of machine manufacturing. If you're passionate about learning how various machines come to life, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. Until next time, stay curious and explore the wonders of machine manufacturing with us.